Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. We're pleased to bring you the latest update of Azing News, and here they are. Cambodian research study bats for new pandemic ideas. Researchers are collecting samples from bats in northern Cambodia in a bid to understand the coronavirus pandemic, returning to a region where a very similar virus was found in animals a decade ago. Two samples from horseshoe bats were collected in 2010 in Stung Treng province near Laos and kept in freezers at the Institute Pasteur du Cambodge IPC in Phnom Penh. <laughs> Tests done on them last year revealed a close relative to the coronavirus that has killed more than 4.6 million people worldwide. An eight-member IPC research team has been collecting samples from bats and logging their species, sex, age and other details for a week. Similar research is going on in the Philippines. Uh, the reason that we select this location as our study site because based on previous study, they found that there is a special richness of bat uh, diversity in this area, especially for the horseshoe bat. Host species, such as pets, typically display no symptoms on pathogens, but this can be devastating if transmitted to humans or other animals. Dr. Vyasno Duong, head of virology at the IPC, says his institute had made for such trips in the past two years, hoping for clues about the origin and evolution of the bat-borne virus. Deadly viruses originating from bats include Ebola and other coronaviruses, such as severe acute respiratory syndrome and Middle East respiratory syndrome. But Vyasna Duong says humans are responsible for the devastation caused by COVID-19 due to the interference and destruction of natural habitats. A research engineer at the IPC's virology unit, Julia Gilbaud, says the French-funded project also aims to look at how the wildlife trade could be playing a part. She adds, as part of the Zukov project, the team are also collecting oral and rectal swab and blood samples from rodents looking for coronaviruses among them. Cambodian starts vaccination exercise for children of 6 to 12 years old. Cambodia begins their vaccination exercise for children aged between 6 to 12 years old in a bid to reopen the country to foreign tourists and all the schools for its 1.8 million youth population. Footage from local news network PNN TV shows Cambodia Prime Minister Hun Sen watching his grandchildren receiving their vaccination at his office at the Peace Building. The World Bank in June said Cambodia's economy is gradually recovering and is projected to grow 4% in 2021 after contracting 3.1% in 2020. The recovery remains uneven and volatile, due in part to the reintroduction of lockdown to control the spread of COVID-19. According to the World Bank, COVID lockdown has hurt tourism in Cambodia with international arrivals as of December 2020, contracted by 80.2% year-on-year, reaching 1.31 million. A super man from Indonesia helping children who are self-isolating at home due to COVID-19. Agus Vidalarko slides into a Spider-Man costume and pulls on a mask before heading out on his mission of the day in Indonesia's central Java province. By dressing up as a superhero, he's hoping to rescue children in self-isolation from pandemic sadness and boredom and hopefully bring a little bit of healing. I do this because many children feel bored during the 14 days of isolation, so they need psychological assistance or trauma healing for a few days until the isolation is over so they find happiness. As the start of the deadly second wave in June, he visited about six families daily, dressed in the range of his costumes, including Spider-Man and Batman. With a drop in the caseload, with an arco who reckons he had entertained more than 100 children in four months, now conduct visits in his neighborhood in central Java once a week. 
He recently visited five-year-old Muhammad Fakhri, who was isolating with his family and had lost his father to COVID-19. Indonesia has faced one of the worst COVID-19 outbreaks in Asia, recording more than 4 million cases and over 138,000 fatalities. In a report, the United Nations Children Agency estimates that 80 million children and adolescents in Indonesia are facing widespread secondary impact on their learning, health, nutrition and economic security due to the pandemic. Super Isoman says he's just hoping to do what he can do to help. Indonesian court rules without a president and other senior government official negligent in air pollution lawsuit. Jakarta court rules Indonesian President Joko Widodo and several senior government officials and local leaders were found guilty of environmental negligence in a civil lawsuit for failing to tackle chronic air pollution. Firstly, the claim of the plaintiffs is partially granted. Secondly, I state that defendants number one, President Joko Widodo, two, Home Affairs Minister and Environment Minister, three, Governors of Jakarta and West Java, four and five, referring to other senior officials, have committed unlawful acts. Thirdly, I sentence defendant number one to establish national air and ambient quality standards to protect humans and the environment. The ruling obliges the president to establish national ambient quality, air quality standards to protect human health and the health minister and Jakarta governor to devise strategies to control air pollution. The court did not rule the actions of the defendants violated human rights but did order other measures to be taken, including an analysis of cross-border emissions and for older vehicles to be periodically tested for emissions. The 32 plaintiff says the lawsuit filed in 2019 was the last ditch attempt to compel authorities to take action against severe air pollution in the blasting metropolis of Jakarta and its surroundings, an area home to more than 30 million people. IQ Air's World Air Quality Report for 2020 says Jakarta was the ninth worst capital city globally in terms of levels of PM2.5 or fine particulate matter and the worst capital in Southeast Asia. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib continues to monitor election despite sentence for corruption. Uh, he should have said I would never betray the trust of the... He tells Reuters in an interview that former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak has not ruled out seeking re-election to parliament within the next two years despite being convicted of corruption in a multi-billion dollar scandal. Najib, who served as a premier for nine years until 2018, was found guilty of corruption last year and sentenced to 12 years in jail. Over one of many cases he faces over misappropriation from now defunct state fund 1MTB, but he has denied wrongdoing and appealed the verdict. He's still a member of parliament, but the constitution bars him from contesting future elections as long as he remains convicted, unless he gets a pardon or a reprieve from the country's monarch. But in an exclusive interview with Reuters, Najib challenged his disqualification, saying it is subject to interpretation. Uh, it, it depends on interpretation uh, in terms of uh, the law, the constitution, and whatever happens in the, in the court proceedings. When asked if he would contest in the next election due by 2023, any politician who would want to play a role would want to sit in the parliament. Najib's comments come less than a month after his craft tainted party, the United Malays National Organization, clinches the premiership after three years out of power. Opponents has expressed fears that party leaders facing charges could see some leniency. AMNO was voted out in 2018 after over 60 years in power, largely due to the 1MDB scandal. Malaysian and US authorities says over 4.5 billion was stolen from 1MDB, some of which went into Najib's bank accounts. The United States Department of Justice has described the scandal as kleptocracy as it was. Najib has insisted the charges against him were politically motivated and raised concerns about former Attorney General Tommy Thomas, a Mahathir appointee who first brought the cases against him in 2018. He says he has pushed Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub to open a royal commission of inquiry into Thomas to establish whether the cases were politically motivated. A very feeble reply. 
to say that he did mess across the bridge when we could. Manny Pacquiao names as Philippine presidential candidate on September 19. President of the Republic of the Philippines. Boxing star Manny Pacquiao says he'll run for president of the Philippines next year after railing against corruption in government and what he calls President Rodrigo Duterte's cozy relationship with China. Pacquiao accepted the nomination of his political allies during the National Assembly of the Faction he leads in the ruling PDP Laban Party days after a rival faction nominated Duterte's longtime aide, Senator Christopher Bongo, as its presidential candidate. Go declined the nomination, but the rift between the Pacquiao and Duterte factions has escalated. The faction nominated Duterte for vice president, a move that critics called a cynical ploy by Duterte to retain power. Born from a poor family in the southern province of Bukindon, Pacquiao started his professional boxing career at the age of 16 and gained popularity with his constant wins and knockouts against renowned boxers. Pacquiao was named Fighter of the Decade by international boxing associations and dubbed as the Pound for Pound King by his fans. One of his biggest fights was his showdown with American boxer Floyd Mayweather in 2015. After years of discussion and speculations, the fight took off in Las Vegas with the Filipino boxer losing in a unanimous decision victory for Mayweather. In politics, he was sitting member of the Congress and regarded in the Philippines was a national idol, earning him the nickname Pambangsang Kamau, Nations First. In 2016, he was elected as a senator. September 20, Manny Pacquiao announces proposal for Philippine presidency in 2022. In people be movement. Boxing star Manny Pacquiao, a senator since June 2016, accepted the nomination of his political allies during the National Assembly of a Faction in the ruling PDP Laban Party that he leads. Tinatanggap ko po ang inyong nomination sa... I'm accepting your nomination as a candidate for President of the Republic of the Philippines. Kandidato sa pagkapangulo ng Republika ng Pilipinas. The 42-year-old Pacquiao, the only man in boxing history to hold world titles in eight different divisions and one of the greatest boxers of all time, was mum about his 20-year professional career. Despite his popularity, Pacquiao is trailing behind frontrunners in opinion polls, which have been topped consistently by Duterte's daughter, Sara Duterte Carpio. China provides vaccine assistance to more than 100 countries and international organizations to fight the pandemic in the world. According to the China International Development Cooperation Agency, the China provides vaccine aid to 106 countries and four international organizations as it continues to carry out anti-pandemic cooperation with nations around the world. Since the beginning of last year, China has provided various anti-pandemic materials such as testing reagents, protective clothing, masks, and ventilators to more than 150 countries and 13 international organizations. Xu Wei, Deputy Director General of the Second Regional Division under the China International Development Cooperation Agency says China efforts to make vaccines for global public goods. China China is making great effort to make vaccines a global public good. China has provided vaccine assistance to 106 countries and four international organizations that have urgent needs and will continue to provide assistance and support, including vaccines to relevant countries. China will make its due contribution to helping the world overcome the pandemic at an early date and achieve sustainable economic recovery. Also to support the United Nations agencies in the fights against the pandemic, China has provided 50 million US dollars in cash to World Health Organization and 50 million US dollars to the UN agencies and other relevant international organizations for responding to dire needs of developing countries. In addition to donating 100 million United States dollars to the WHO led vaccines global access vaccine sharing initiative, China has pledged to donate another 100 million doses of vaccines to developing countries by the end of this year. 
South Korean leader repeats call for declaration to end Korean War. South Korea President Moon Jae-in addresses the United Nations General Assembly and repeated a call for a declaration to formally end the 1950-1953 Korean War. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Moon Jae-in, President of the Republic of Korea. 한반도 평화의 시작은 언제나 대화와 협력입니다. I once again urge the community of nations to mobilize its strengths for the end of war declaration of the Korean Peninsula and propose the three parties of the two Koreas and the U.S. or four parties of the two Koreas and the U.S. and China come together and declare that the war on the Korean Peninsula is over. I believe we can make irreversible progress in the nuclearization and usher in an era of complete peace. <laughs> North Korea had long sought a formal end to the Korean War to replace the armistice that stopped the fighting but left it and the United States led United Nations Command still technically at war. Meanwhile, United States President Joe Biden addresses the United Nations Assembly says the United States sought serious and sustained diplomacy to pursue the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. North Korea has brushed off United States calls for a return to dialogue. And the head of the United Nations Atomic Watchdog says this week that Pyongyang's nuclear program is going full steam ahead. The President of the Republic of Korea for the statement just made. Vietnam approves Abdal vaccine for use against coronavirus when Vietnamese President visits Cuba. The government says Vietnam has approved Cuba's Abdallah vaccine for use against the novel coronavirus as the Southeast Asian country is battling its worst outbreak. Abdallah becomes the eighth COVID-19 vaccine approved for use in Vietnam, which has one of the lowest vaccination rates in the region, with only 6.3% of its 98 million people having received at least two shots. The announcement came hours after President Nguyen Xuan Phuc left Hanoi for an unofficial visit to Havana. Vietnam has recorded 667,650 coronavirus infections and 16,637 deaths, the vast majority in the Delta-driven outbreak from late April. <laughs> the Ministry of Health last month says Cuba would supply large quantity of Abdallah to Vietnam and transfer the production technology by the end of the year. Vietnam and Cuba are among the last five communist rural countries in the world, along with China, Laos and North Korea. In July, Vietnam urged the United States to end its hostile policy toward Cuba and leave its long-standing trade embargo after rare anti-government protest on the island. Well, thank you for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great weekend. See you soon.